first and the second stay separate. Um, the first stage will continue, and it will continue on a secondary, non-mission critical, um, uh, I guess, experiment to some extent. Um, it will turn around. It will perform a what's called a boost back burn. Um, that boost back burn um, brings the stage closer, closer back in. Um, it will then continue to just uh, coast. Um, and as it gets into closer to the atmosphere, it will perform an entry burn. The entry burn will uh, slow the stage down, and that uh, reduces the loads on, on on the stage. So it's uh, it's um, supposed to to bring the stage then through the atmosphere, and that will be followed by a landing burn. And the landing burn is targeted uh, to a autonomous spaceport um, drone ship. Um, that is the official word for it. <laughs> So the drone ship uh, sits there right now and uh, is basically waiting for the mission to happen. Um, that I'm, I'm pretty sure this will be uh, will be very exciting. Um, it's as I said, it's an experiment. Um, there's a um, there's a certain likelihood that this will not work out right. That something will go wrong. It's the first time we try this. Nobody uh, has, has ever tried that, um, to our knowledge. And, and so currently, Elon put a probability of 50% on, on, this, uh, on this part, um, really uh, as an, ex an experimental part, basically, of the, uh, the mission. Um, Again, hello, Marcia Dunn, Associated Press for Mr. Knuxman. Um I'd like to hear a little bit more about the, the experiment at the end of the flight. Um, how close will the closest SpaceX employees be to the drone when all this is happening? How will you record it? Um, also, how many, by what, by what time do you expect touchdown to occur? And is this all pre-programmed or will there be flight controllers being able to divert it if there is a problem of some sort? So the, um, the first stage is subject to um, range control in terms of flight safety. Um, so that, that much is clear. Uh, it has its own safety package basically on board. Um, but there's, there's no, the autonomous part on the spaceship indicates there's just nobody nearby on the, on the boat or, you know, within a certain safe distance. I want to say 10 miles, roughly, something like that, but I'm, I'm not sure about the number. Uh, it's a safe distance that basically we, um, the, I believe the range safety office tells us um, there's some analysis attached to it that, that this is a safe distance. So no employee or, or anybody else is nearby the landing site uh, or the, sorry, the space port drone ship. <laughs> Um, so, so um, that that's what um, what keeps that safe. And I think you asked how we record this. We have uh, cameras on the vehicle. Um, we have telemetry on the vehicle, of course. Um, there's going to be a uh, telemetry boat nearby recording uh, telemetry. We will not. I believe we may have real time, but we will likely not have real time information. And I want to point this out from um, from the Cape. The landing site is basically over the horizon, um, and, and we have no direct connection. We lose, we lose the direct connection with the vehicle at one point in time, but we do record the uh, data locally, um, you know, near, near the, uh, near the <laughs> drone ship, um, so that we can recreate whatever happened then. Yeah. Uh, Bill Harwood with CBS with two questions. Um, Hans, what kind of sea states can you hand, and maybe uh, the weather gentleman can give us some sense of what the waves are where, wherever your drone ship is? And I have a question for Mike after that. Yeah, I, I don't know the sea state numbers, but I heard the waves are currently um, 4 to 10 feet. And um, for the backup day, I heard numbers um, up to 14 feet. Uh, this is uh, neither one is a problem for the autonomous spaceport drone ship. Um, it's it's pretty heavy. It's a, it's a fairly heavy uh, um, piece of metal <laughs> so um, and it has it has uh, position correction for uh, so it doesn't drift, drift away it's actually very tight position control we land we pretended the ocean is a, a landing pad basically and landed soft on there and you're right those landings were, were actually uh, very successful um, they worked really nice um, there's obviously the ocean is not a platform and so so it didn't um, so we the, the fundamental difference is the limited size, I think, of the autonomous spaceport drone ship. It's, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to, uh, to hit a, a platform of that size, basically. A, a, and um, when you look at it on the ground, I think it's, it's probably a very, very big platform, a big spaceport. But if you look at it from, I think, almost 100 
50 or so miles uh, up in, 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 in suborbit, then it looks like a very, very small place uh, to land on. So I think the, 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 the position accuracy of that is just the, the, the primary challenge. Um, in general, there's not a lot of uh, room to maneuver. Everything has to be really working fine, and that's why we're really cautious. I want to also yeah, point I think out. you said the key word. The key word is long term. Um, obviously, if you if you were to fly and throw the airplane away after every every trip you take, it's going to be expensive. Um, and and so if you carry this over to rockets, if you're able to reuse um, parts of the rocket first stage, um, really, and th the key is actually reusability that is easy. It does not involve taking the rocket apart and, and replacing a lot of parts here and there and putting new engines on, by that time you lost already basically. But I think if you have reusability that, um, you know, even just limited for a number of flights that is in the airplane, you know, type category, you inspect it, um, that, that is the long-term vision I think that, that um, largely um, Elon drives uh, into SpaceX. And, and and honestly, you know, if you if you if you do imagine that you can fly the stage 50 times, um, there will be there will be costs associated with with recovering the stage, but that's that is really the way to go in order to get get costs on uh, on launches down. Uh, it's actually it's actually not that different from the um, other the simulated landings on the on the surface. It's, it's very close. Um, it does use additional fuel. Um, on, on the overall sense, you got to keep some fuel in the first stage um, for that maneuver, but uh, it's actually not that much. And the, there are some benefits you have. The stage is largely empty, so it's light after the, um, the main burn, after the ascent burn. And uh, we actually, when we land, we only have one engine on, so, so it's, uh, it, it's uh, somewhat favorable in that case that the stage is actually, it's a big structure. Um, it's no question. It's a it's a pretty big structure, but overall it is actually very light. The, the rocket goes its way, <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, it, uh, it, uh, there there are decision points, um, but the the rocket will nominally go through a timeline mm -hmm. and perform the burns and maneuvers um, that that pointed to the um, autonomous space patrol ship. Um, so there's no decision there, unless I mean, yeah, that's. Uh, and will you know in real time oh, how yeah. well it worked? Uh, I don't want to promise that, frankly. Um, and the reason I, I want is because it depends on, on uh, internet connectivity to satellite and, and links that uh, we don't always control. And there are, we, we've seen them work mostly, but sometimes not. <laughs> so um, we should we should you know have some indication, but um, I really don't don't want to promise that. The, if you just rely on on um, on the range assets here, basically receiving antennas, um, no, you can't see it from here. It does work. What happens to that stage? How is it brought back? It's going to be a huge celebration. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, the, the, the stage will be brought back to port and, uh, in, and thoroughly inspected. Obviously, that, that, uh, a lot of, lot of our um, future decisions depend on how well that uh, stage comes back, if there's any damage, and uh, uh, how we could improve uh, thermal protection and, and stuff like that. Yeah, it will stay. Uh, it will stay on the on the autonomous spaceport drone ship. So, so you're you're right. We added we added grid fins to the vehicle. They're visible on the outside and they fold out. Um, uh, I guess like five minutes roughly into flight. Um, the the grid fins give us more range on the um, on the down part of the of the trajectory and. Um, and they allow us to keep the vehicle stable, so they save propellant, which we obviously need for the landing itself. So, um, so that is obviously one part of the uncertainty that we have. Uh, we've done we've done analysis, we've done tests, but ultimately uh, you need a flight test to verify how effective are those um, fins, how well do they work, do they maintain stability in terms of roll, pitch, and yaw on the vehicle, and all these things are. It is an experiment uh, to some extent. 50%, um, I don't know, it's so certainly for, for, for the type of experiment, I would agree with you, it's actually not too bad. <laughs> um, but then obviously the main mission is so, so much more in, 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 in reliability, um, it, it uh, pales against that.
and it's, it's pretty stable and yeah. the, the, the stage is pretty light if you stick the landing yes uh, i mean will the booster literally just stand there or could it be mm -hmm. Exactly. blown over by a gust of wind or um, also I was curious if if you had a, a hard landing rather than a soft landing would that be bad for yeah, the booster or for bad. the ship or for both <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 it's uh, yeah. uh <laughs> which which would it be worse for the a hard uh, landing or the partial ship? landing would be both bad um, <laughs> yeah the landing has to be perfect um, in in order to actually just stand there and uh, and be safe on the ship um, the the ship is pretty big, um, so I, I don't expect waves, uh, unless they're really large, to have any impact on the vehicle. We, our analysis indicates um, the, the first stage will, will stand securely. It will then go, actually when it lands, it goes through a safing sequence. The, um, the boat nearby um, that will get closer then has control of the stage, so they can vent the stage, they can verify the stage is safe to go. Um, everything has been saved. And so we have a, uh, an operational concept of operations, basically how to secure the stage then on the boat and, uh, and tie it down and make sure that on the trip back uh, to port, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. um, whenever that is, uh, how often do you expect to try to do that before you might be ready to move to a landing on land? Uh, you know, this actually depends partially on the manifest. Um, there might be situations where the, uh, where the um, drone ship landing is more favorable in terms of propellant. And there might be other situations where it might be favorable or possible to get back to land. Um, so it really depends on the, on the mission itself. And in terms of video, um, I want to say if it goes well by the end of the day, maybe something like that. It takes, it takes, a, uh, it takes a while to transmit the video back. And, and that's another thing where the, the link has to work. So it might be a couple hours, day, day or two. Engine failure prevent the first stage recovery, even if you could push Dragon onto orbit. Uh, it depends. So um, it depends on the engine that fails. If it happens to be the engine we need for landing, that would be bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do want to point out that actually has um, it would probably have no bearing at all for for Dragon if he if he uh, lose the landing engine. Uh, we need for for the um, for the. For the stage landing uh, sequence, we need three, three specific engines. Um, currently, if one of those engines would fail, uh, if the center engine would fail, that would certainly be a problem. But I'm not sure about the other two that might, we might be able to pull this off anyways. The 50-50 would go down. <laughs> question comes from a Twitter user, Anthony, who asked, at what altitude and speed do you expect the grid fins to deploy? Um, they deploy, oh gee, I, I, I know the time. I, I looked up the time, but I really didn't check the altitude. It's, it's way out in the, uh, outside the atmosphere. So it's, it's before we re-enter. Asks, did the drone ship move to the landing zone on its own? Um, was there a crew on board the drone ship while it was moving to the landing zone? I don't think so. Well, actually, I don't know. I have to be correct. I mean, um, I, I don't know the details how we got the drone ship there. I know there's another boat with, with crew and uh, the, the drone ship. I'm not sure if there's any quarters on, on it or not. I don't think so. From mm -hmm. Brent, who asks, uh, how do the people at NASA feel about SpaceX trying to land uh, the first stage? Well, that can't go to me. Or... Well, it, it's for yeah, why don't you me. It for me. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay. good. Okay, the people at NASA are, <laughs> are really interested in that. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, um, it's, I guess NASA wants to make sure that it doesn't get attention away from the main mission. Uh, I wanted to say that. That's just, uh, and, and honestly, I, I see that I have the same, same interest. I want to make sure that the CRS-5 mission works perfectly and, and there's no impact to the mission at all. Again, it's all about the barge. Um, I wanted to know if you have a precise uh, landing uh, coordinates for the barge. Um, it looked like it was about 200 miles east of Jacksonville, possibly. And then uh, secondly, I wanted to see if you'd be willing to say how much the autonomous drone cost. Thank you. Oh, OK. On the first one, the first fair question, all my, all I comment is stay away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really mean that. <laughs> um, and on the second one, I don't know the cost, frankly. It's actually, 
I want to point out it's not a barge. A barge has no, no propulsion. This, um, this vehicle has thrusters, and uh, so it's a drone ship. <laughs> yes, that's correct. Um, it's, it's, um, the nominal timeline uh, shuts the engine down right around nine, nine minutes. And again, that's just, um, just a little a tad before the second stage shuts down. Um, and I, on purpose, did not look exactly at the location. I know it's a, it's a couple hundred miles out um, in, the, in the ocean to be safe, basically. But uh, I don't know the exact, the exact location, unfortunately. Now, first of all, is it sitting in the spot right now where you're hoping the rocket lands, or is it actually going to adjust at all tomorrow? It, it picks a spot, and, and it, it uh, holds the spot. Um, and it holds it very tightly. Uh, that Elon. It could possibly land on the launch pad day of, re restack, and take off again, so, sort of like a commercial aircraft. I mean, what, what could that's it be? The, that's the, I think that is the, the vision, ultimately, to make this more like an aircraft um, operation where the stage comes back um, gets uh, minimal service. Um, fu fundamentally, if you look at the aircraft industry, which is extremely a well-oiled machine by now, just simply because they have so many operations. And if you can get the number of operations up in, in, in the space industry, um, that, that basically is our, our, our vision and our, our goal, to have as many launches as possible to make sure that we um, fully understand what happens on the way up and down and, uh, and address whatever needs to be addressed, but not more, yeah? and basically drive the cost, um, cost down over the long, long range. I mean, this would have an impact on the entire industry uh, if you, you know, for, for a moment, assume this would be, what you said, like one launch per day or something like that, or even more. Um, you would fly spacecraft that um, could, that wouldn't be that expensive anymore. Uh, you would take more risks, and uh, you might have a week of supply on the station. <laughs> Um, so I, I think I think if uh, this would work out, it would have a tremendous impact on the on the industry that I haven't really thought through personally. I'm pretty sure Elon did. Uh, so. <laughs> All right. And in the event you are successful, will you be coming back to Jacksonville or right down Main Street here into the turning base? Uh, I think it's Jacksonville. So okay. the manifest is busy. Um, on the bright side, um, unlike th this, this will now include more launch sites. Um, so um, Vandenberg will be uh, will be more active. Uh, you will see um, the the next mission is, is, is a mission called Discover, um, and it's actually uh, currently at the end of January. Um, there will be Dragon missions, Dragon Crew Dragon missions, rather um, like the the paddleboard, for example. Um, Falcon Heavy. Um, I don't know where we are currently and how how. Um, <laughs> how everything is coming together, but I know that the, uh, a significant part of the company is working on Falcon Heavy and uh, trying to get it out for the first flight. Um, but I really don't have an update on the, on the actual uh, launch date. 